This is the European Women's Artistic Gymnastics Championships Munich 2022 Qualification Subdivision 3. Herzlich willkommen bei den European Championships München 2022 Gerettung. Qualifikation der Frauen Subdivision 3. Und das sind die Teams in dieser dritten Subdivision. These are the participating federations. Beginnend am Sprung, starting on board, Norway, Norwegen, Mali, Neurota, Juliane Tessebu, Maria Brodebüt, Julie Matze und Madeleine Leitner. Herzlich Willkommen, das zweite Mix-Team, Mix-Group 2, from Georgia, Ami Gobatze, Bulgaria, Valentina Gorgieva, Monaco, Joanna De Freitas, Azerbaijan, Milana, Milakovskaya, and Samira Garamadova.
Am Schwimmbalken jetzt für die Schweiz, Stefanie Siegenthaler. representing Denmark.
Mag je deze Oh, en dat is het zip. Ah, je hebt bestaan.
6,36 Punkte für Mina Koskaya. Und ihre Teamkollegin ist die letzte jetzt hier am Boden. Samira wartet da noch auf ihre Note am Boden, aber sie hat keinen Stress, denn sie ist in der zweiten Gruppe dann wieder dran, auch mit dem Aufwärmen. Das ist das Gute, wenn man die Aufwärmzeit ist in One-Touch unterteilt in zwei Gruppen. Erstens ist der One-Touch etwas kürzer, zweitens haben diese Turnerinnen einfach auch noch mal ein bisschen länger Zeit an sich zu erholen. Maria, wollen wir mal ganz kurz auf die Bodenmusik zurückkommen? Ganz früher gab es ja Klaviermusik. Das mir erzählt deine Mama einfach zu Klaviermusik getanzt. Die, die Tonnen, Genau, die kann sich jetzt mal gegrüßt fühlen. Die sitzt nämlich heute auch hier. Ah. Ich wollte schon immer mal meine Mutter grüßen. <lacht> Liebe Grüße, Mama. Ich meine Mami grüßen. Ja, genau. ja Maria, du darfst. Okay, also sie hat noch zu Klaviermusik getonnt. In der rhythmischen Sportgymnastik gibt es ja Sogar Vocals schon seit vielen Jahren. Würdest du das auch fürs Toppen mal wünschen? Ja, wir haben ja gerade schon drüber geredet. Ähm, ich glaube, es wird so.
12,333 Punkte für Stefanie Siebenthaler. Und die Regung am Boden. Kameramann, Denmark, die letzte Tournament. Into more international finals. There is quite an increasing number of nations that maybe historically have not been making World Cup podiums. And yet, over the past few years, we've seen just historic performance after historic performance for nations like Denmark speaks to the increasing globality of the sport, potentially. Absolutely right. Now, what about a global look at the uh, state of play in the women's all-around competition? So what we're doing now is we're bringing you the results of... Uh, gymnasts who've competed earlier and interspersing them with the gymnasts who are competing at the moment so you can see effectively what it would be like if everybody was competing at the same time and evidence of how strong a campaign Maisa Kusiko of Finland had that she is the halfway leader This is the all-around final. The title will be decided at the close of play today. So it is Ukraine now that move to the balance beam. Romania, meanwhile, will take to the uneven bars. We just caught the last moments of Anna Barbosa's warm-up. We've got the Norwegians who are also uh, done and dusted, having uh, just competed on the uneven bars. Romania and Norway paired as all of the teams are paired in this busy session of competition. And a gymnast who there are a lot of people excited about when it comes to her performances on vault to Valentina Georgieva of Bulgaria. Some of the best technique that we will see on vault today certainly someone with the potential to make the apparatus final. She's also quite good on the floor exercise. So let us stay with the balance beam and the performances of the Ukrainian team. Valeria Osipova is the gymnast to begin their rotation on the balance beam. She has made a good number of balance beam finals at World Cups. And it's a tricky beginning. And historically, it's typical of what we have often seen from Ukraine. Really beautiful gymnastics, but also inconsistency. As young gymnasts, the Ukrainians do a lot of ballet training, and so they tend to do a very balletic style of gymnastics. You can see it in the way that she holds her hands. You can see it in the extension of her feet. It's a style that is very appreciated internationally.
just the dismount left to go. Round off double twist. From Valeria Osipova of Ukraine. Well, I must uh, apologise. I gather that many of you have spent the subdivision listening to us without, uh, or listening to the broadcast without any commentary. I'm not apologising for that. I'm apologising for the fact you can now hear us again. So, sorry about that. We are back, it seems, and uh, the audio problems have been resolved. Problems relating to the quality of my commentary will never be, but uh, there you go. <laughs> now, back we go to Valeria Osipova. An unfortunate mistake on the mount. Her shoulders not corresponding quite to where the beam was. It threw her off, but the rest of the routine, just lovely. We can barely begin to comprehend the difficulties in trying to form a Ukrainian team. We'll come back to that as we look at this vault from the young Bulgarian Valentina Gyorkieva. This, a double twisting Yurchenko, one of the few that we've seen, and just explosive power off the table. Rather uncontrolled step back, which is going to cost her probably five tenths of a point. But the difficulty tariff of this is quite comparatively big 5.0 compared to a 4.2 for the Yurchenko full or a 4.6 for the Yurchenko one and a half. So she's losing a bit of execution because she did take that sizable step, but she's also gaining nearly a full point in difficulty over others who've chosen to do simpler things. It's a trade-off. There was such a sense of goodwill when Georgieva won the gold medal at the World Challenge Cup in Osijek earlier this year after so many struggles in finals when coming in as a very high qualifier. Let's hope that she continues this promising form. Wow, she really is an exciting and powerful vaulter. And I have to say, I wonder if what we saw before was actually her warm-up vault. She didn't salute the judge at the end of it, and this looks more like what she did in competition. It's the same vault, the Yurchenko with a double twist, but with a much better landing, I have to say. And so it is all for the good. The 5.0 D score lands so that she does not take a penalty. That was very well done. Well, I think you're right in your analysis of that. Unless she's decided to become the only gymnast to do three vaults in the uh, qualification process. It's a bit worrisome to watch her rub her ankle like that, however. Whenever we see that, you always wonder if there was a tweak on the landing. She was a silver medalist at the Junior European Championships in 2020. She looks as though she has uh, hurt herself in the first vault. Now, the score, 13.766. And one has to say, you just hope that she should be doing this next vault and that it's the right call. The athletes at the heart of that, they know better than anyone else. Although sometimes uh, an athlete needs to ha have it gently said to them, it might be best if you don't do it. But she is somebody who is really aiming for this European Championship final. And uh, just trying to keep an eye on how she's walking away from the uh, vaulting table there, Valentina Georgieva. Well, let's have a look back at this performance. This is the Sukahara style vault with a full twist, so she does a quarter turn onto the table and then a layout with a full twist off of it. Once again, quite a large step on the landing, and since that's more than shoulder length, it's going to cost her perhaps half a point. We take a look there at the much better landing from her first vault. When she won a medal at the Junior European Championships in 2020. It was the first apparatus medal for a Bulgarian in women's competition at the European Championships since 1992. Sylvia Mitova, a vault bronze medal. Now Osipova scores 11.4 on the balance beam. Once again, to those of you who are just stepping into this subdivision, having not watched the coverage, Earlier on in the day, we're in subdivision three of four. Well, even if you 
I've been here the whole day. We're still in subdivision three or four. It's a 13.1 for Georgieva for the second vault. So just to let you know, that puts her in second place in vault qualification, nearly four tenths behind Zofia Kovac. On we go, and we're on the uneven bars and watching Anna Barbosa of Romania. She has a couple of really big release moves, just like that clear hip in Pike Kachev, and that the Rechna Stalder in Kachev. Very nice pack salto. Legs just glued together. Clear hip, Shapashnik of a half. She had something of a questionable dismount in the warm ups. This should be a full twisting double tuck. No problem. Romania's Anna Balbosu illustrating to those of you who might not have seen her before why her arrival on the senior circuit has been so keenly anticipated by gymnastics fans all in sundry. Romania, of course, not a nation that has enjoyed the tremendous success recently that they did from the 1970s through the 2000s. The score is 13.5 for Anna Barbosu. And that puts her in fourth place in uneven bars qualification. And with Anna Barbosu, the country is literally on the upswing. Gymnastics benefits from a successful Romania. It's almost an ingrained part of the sport. And here we are in a venue that saw some uh, stellar performances uh, back in the day from those famous, famous gymnasts. The site of the 1972 Olympic Games, the Olympia Halle in Munich, Germany. As you said to me the other day, 50 years, I... Uh, my, my blood ran cold when I heard <laughs> it. That was how time passes. As uh, Dylan Thomas said, time passes. Listen, time passes. And we come closer now to the performance of Diana Savilieva of Ukraine on the balance beam. Savilieva, quite a late addition to the Ukrainian team for this championship. She wasn't on the start list a couple of days ago. Yes, a late addition. A logical choice, though, as the gymnast who was fourth in the all-around competition at last year's national championships. really unfortunate couldn't have done more to try to stay on she really could not have sometimes gravity is just against you she is exhibiting some nervous movement her ankles wobbling a bit throughout this exercise Generally, that is an indicator of nerves. It's a fine effort, that, from Diana Savilieva, the late addition to the Ukrainian team. She was the best performer on floor at the national championships last year. It'll be interesting to see her on that piece next. Very interesting entry into this flight series, back handspring layout, step out. And this was where the real problem happened. And look how far back her shoulders are. They're not square to the beam at all. It can be so hard to pull that back.
Vaulting now is the competitor from Georgia, Ani Gobadze. Young athlete who is from Batumi on the Georgian west coast. An ancient Greek and Roman port that they call now the Las Vegas of the Black Sea, famed for its gambling industry and its high-rise buildings that are built around the 19th century old town, a particularly beautiful old town. It's a nation that has extraordinary history going back into antiquity and beyond. More recent part of its history is Ani Gobadze, who made her World Cup debut this season in Baku, also competed in Osijek. It's her first ever European Championships. She started with a 10.166 on floor. Let's see what we see now from the 16-year-old on vault. What we see is a Yurchenko with a full twist done in the tuck position. Quite weak block off the horse. Doesn't get a great deal of height. Let's have another look. And actually, her arms are bent in the repulsion phase. That could cost her up to half a point actually and then yes in terms of amplitude just doesn't have a whole lot of lift and as a result has trouble with the rotation and trouble with the landing and almost to look at it from the other perspective it's quite extraordinary that she got that around and managed to land what she did it is rather All part of the learning process when you're at your first ever European Championships. Ani Gobadze of Georgia. And we're drawing to a close the second rotation. I'm sure you can tell by the uh, change in the mood, the lighting and the music. It is time to move on to the next rotation. So we're well underway now in subdivision number three. We've gone beyond the halfway mark. As the gymnasts begin to warm up for the third rotation, we also think about what is to come in the final group of competitors where we'll see the teams of Great Britain, of Belgium, of Israel, the Czech Republic, Italy, Greece and France competing along with representation from Poland. That's going to be a very enjoyable final subdivision. I trust that you're having a really enjoyable day watching this. Thank you as ever for your company. Nothing finer than a big day of gymnastics action been a yearned for competition this and the gymnasts have been saying so themselves they've really been longing for a competition with spectators in the stands they haven't had too much of that in the last several years you wonder don't you how many of these very young athletes i'm thinking about particularly the debutants what they know of the 1972 Olympic Games, is it just from a, a far away, almost black and white era? You made the comment the other day as we were walking through the arena that you almost, you almost viewed it in black and white in your head. Yes, it's really something to stand in this arena and to think about what has come before the 1972 Games were a watershed Olympics for the sport of gymnastics. As I was saying to you at that time, gymnastics was one way going into the games and it emerged and it was something different. They were transformative, those Olympics. Fascinating history and we'll indulge in it more, I'm sure, as these championships go on. It's 11.366 for Ani Gobadzi. 
and it's a great space as well. They've done a very interesting job with the arena presentation, the centre, the uh, rotating space, allowing for team presentation at the start. And it does rather bring a focal point, actually, to the whole arena, having that big central area. It, it does. We were remarking on it, weren't we? The way that it highlights each apparatus individually. Exactly so. So Norway now are taking to the balance beam. And we've got some good competitors on this piece. This is uh, Mali Neurauta. 19-year-old from Oslo, team bronze medalist at the Nordic Championships. Goes for a switch leap to immediate switch leap as a mount sequence. Potentially questionable about whether she hit a 180-degree split. If the judges decide that she didn't, she will lose some execution. Very nice. Yes, there was a balance check, but that is an unusual combination. Front handspring to immediate side aerial. Really entered into that without hesitation and did a nice job of putting her feet down on the beam. Very cool also. Back walk over into splits. And like a few really nice things we've seen today, she doesn't get any difficulty points for that, nor for that backward roll. No substantial difficulty points anyway, but she does it because she can and because it looks great. It did look great. We've seen many nice moments like that on the balance beam so far today, enjoyable flourishes, uh, touches of style, of finesse. And Mali uh, Neurauta adds her contribution. There's really so much you can do on a balance beam. And yes, there are the elements, the flips, the twists, the things that will get you mounds of difficulty, but there are also really beautiful, creative things that are considerably less difficult, but no less beautiful to watch. And it's nice to see that from a gymnast that we've known chiefly as a Volta internationally as well, based on the finals that she's made it to. Now this is... Gudrun Hadar-Dottir of Iceland. <laughs> 17-year-old. She was uh, a balance yeah, beam a bronze medalist at the Nordic Championships in July, where she also was part of that bronze medal winning team. Balance beam, very much what she's best known for. But we have seen this routine before. It was at the... Northern European Championships in November of last year. She made the uneven bars final. She's a gymnast who came to national prominence when winning the junior all-around competition at the Björk International in 2019. Björk is the name of uh, the club she competes at. She was anything but oh so quiet, establishing herself as a really strong junior performer. Now we're embedded into the national team at just 17. Gudrun Haradotis. It's 11.733 for Mali Neurata. And awaiting her score, the uh, Gymnast from Iceland, one of two 17-year-olds in the team. 
their real veteran is Agnes Suto. I'm sure, a name that many of you know and remember well from European Championships gone by. I'll give you an update on some of the other performances that have been going on during this rotation in just a moment. We're seeing it right now through the eyes of the Gudrun Hadar Dottir. Her score is 10.1. Camille Rasmussen of Denmark now competing on floor. There is no denying the impact that this young gymnast has had on the sport in her country of late. Camille Rasmussen of Denmark, who won a silver medal on vault at the World Cup in Varna, the first ever medal for a female gymnast from Denmark at World Cup level. She scores 12.533. Blythe, she has been such an important performer for her country. She has, and she continues to be. Tremendous tumbling in this routine. The double layout to open. A beautiful double tuck to end. Now the Swiss are vaulting. And uh, the competition seems to be getting better as we look at Lily habis reutinger who started with an 8.66 on balance beam. But the Swiss maybe steadied the nerves on floor. And this was a very steady effort from habis reutinger Yurchenko with a full twist, spots the landing, just a slight hop back, really no problem. And it looks like we will see her vault once more. Well, she is the reigning national champion and has aspirations of getting into the vault final. She didn't miss out by a great deal at her home European Championships in Basel last year. She was 13th in vault qualification, a very credible performance. 13, her score. So that is the team vault completed. She says that she is somebody who really thrives on the difficulty of gymnastics. The more complicated things are, the better she likes it. Handspring front pike with a half twist. Once again, a very secure performance. I think that's a word very well chosen. Tidy vaulting from Habis Reutinger. Looked in control of what she was doing on both occasions. Clearly. Good push off the table. Plenty of time to get up in the air, complete the flip. The half twist spotting the ground, going for a really nice landing. It's a very interesting point you make about her 
almost being bored by the basics of, of gymnastics and getting excited when things became trickier. 12.783 is her average. That has her in seventh place at the moment in vault qualification. There are still quite a few competitors to come. I'm sure there are a lot of you out there that can empathise with that feeling of almost having to push beyond the point where something was mechanical for you until you really started to feel that you were doing it well and could do difficult things. To wit, here is the silver medalist on the beam at the Nordic Championships from July, Maria Tronrud. Pretty illusion turn there. One of those deceptively difficult skills. side saw me as well. She is the team captain of the Norwegian squad and the reigning national champion on the balance beam, Maria Tronrud, the 20 year old who spent her whole life living in Oslo. This is the mount sequence. Switch leap from the board onto the beam, followed immediately by another switch leap. This is her acrobatic or flight series. She is slightly off, and that necessitates a wobble, but nothing more than that. This perhaps the most complicated part of the routine, the dismount with counter rotation, gainer off the end of the beam with a full twist. It's an interesting concept, isn't it? The, the notion of counter rotation in the balance beam dismount. It's terribly difficult. And it looks wonderful. I think back to the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham as we uh, remind ourselves of Lily habis Reutinger's performance on vault, that one of the things to a, a crowd of new fans that always, always gets them gasping is any form of gain or dismount from the balance beam. Because of that, that notion of the body seeming to work against itself at what it wants to be doing. It's exactly that. And then you add a twist to what already feels very strange. And yes, and for her, there will be two tenths of bonus for the dismount bonus, something newly instituted. If you do a dismount of a value of D or higher, of course, in women's gymnastics, elements are valued from A, the easiest, up to J, I think. So anything higher than a D, two tenths of a point extra. Now that is not uh, the score that we're focused on now, but just a reminder of the 12.783 uh, average for Lily habiz Reutinger on vault that has her in seventh position in vault qualification. It's an uneasy place to be with so many still to come. So this is the uh, warm up ahead of the next phase of competition. Gymnast from uh, Romania will be vaulting. So pretty secure the Swiss on vault in that last rotation. Helma Adelstein Dottir of Iceland producing their best score on the uneven bars. It's 12.9 for Maria Tronrud on the balance beam. 
And that is the fourth strongest performance we've seen on balance beam so far. She's done really well. Goes uh, ahead, actually, of Kim Bui in the balance beam qualification. Standing still, Emma Malevsky of Germany, the top performer. What a great routine that was from her right at the start of the day. On the subject of the balance beam. We're with the Romanian team and Andrea Preda. Tidy free walkover after the round off back handspring mount. One thing you often see in Romanian beam routines, you can see the repetitions that they have done because they are simply so steady on the acrobatic elements. build the difficulty score out of the eight hardest elements the gymnasts do on balance beam floor exercise and uneven bars. Round off double twist dismount. The gymnast too was a bronze medalist on the beam at the Junior European Championships in Mersin a couple of years ago. Still only 16 and a silver medalist at the Junior National Championships last year. She does some very nice work on this piece, doesn't she? She really does. There was a little wobble here and there, but nothing major. That actually on the simple full turn, perhaps the most conspicuous one. Back handspring layout to two feet and the double twist dismount. See her head coming around, so she's able to spot the landing, know where she's going. Andrea Preda, as we now head to the uneven bars, we're having a look at Monaco's Joanna de Freitas. And a very weak bail, unfortunately. Doesn't get anywhere near the handstand, and then goes on to overbalance the next handstand that she attempts. So something of a handstand story here. Well, we remind ourselves once more that this is a full senior international debut for a gymnast whose biggest competition before this was at uh, the Elite Gym Massilia competition in Marseille in November of last year. It's a lovely competition, but it is not anything like the scale of these European Championships. Nice full turn into Giants, the blind change. And toe on, front tuck dismount. Nicely performed. Monaco's Joanna de Freitas lives uh, and was born in the Principality. And good for her for really putting up a fight, seeing if she couldn't just arch her back and push through her shoulders and bring her feet back over to where they needed to be. Not this time. It's good effort though, wasn't it? Very good effort. Sometimes you can sit there in handstanding and feel yourself going over and go, oh no. You can sit there in handstand. I can't <laughs> do the handstand in the first place, but, but your point is well taken. It has been a while. <laughs> Now to the floor exercise, Elizaveta Hubareva of Ukraine.
you are watching a European champion. In Elisaveta Hubalieva. Well, we're now finally looking back at the uh, completion of the performance of Elizaveta Kubalieva of Ukraine. I think we got stuck in something of a loop there. Enjoying that so much, we uh, watched it again and again. But as I was about to say, you're looking at a European champion here, team gold medalist in 2020, a brilliant accomplishment. 11.566 for her. What a dramatic final that was as well. Ukraine and Romania separated by a matter of tenths, all coming down to the final uh, performances in the final rotation. Great entertainment. 12.466 was the score for Andrea Preda on the balance beam. Now, Slovenia with uh, some very experienced vaulters, one of whom is Chasha Kishilev. Yurchenko, one and a half twist. This carries a difficulty tariff, 4.6. On the second flight, she does take some deductions for bending her legs slightly, but the difficulty of this comparatively will stand her in good stead for potentially making the apparatus final gymnast who was fifth at the European Championships last year and she was really uh, thrilled to make it to her first ever European Championship final and she's now 29. She just recently finished fourth at the Mediterranean Games on a tie break with Angela Andreoli. There's a name we'll be saying a lot more in a little while as she's coming up. But back to Chasha Kiselev. She's had a great season. She won Cottbus and Cairo in the World Cup circuit. Very successful. One of the reasons that she has been so successful is she has two high difficulty vaults that are different, that she does very well. Handspring front tuck with a full twist. Minimal shuffling around on the landing. Good height above the table. Plenty of time to really go for it, even though she can't see the ground before she lands. Well done. Twelve point six for the second vault for Chasha Kisilev. We'll come back to that in just a moment as the action continues now over on the balance beam. Romania with Anna Barbosu. Steady beginning. This is impressive work. Yeah. 
double wolf turn. And as ever from Romania, the voices of her teammates in the background pushing her onward. Generation upon generation of Romanian gymnasts steady on balance beam. And they've got another one. Two and a half twist dismount. That's very exciting from Anna Balbosu of Romania. Silver medalist on the beam in her World Cup debut in Osijek earlier this year. She also won the floor title. Yeah, there'll be people thinking about the glory days as they watch her performances like this. Yes, indeed. And why shouldn't they? She's exciting, isn't she? She's very exciting, very promising. Perhaps execution-wise, a few small things to clean up, such as the crossed legs in the two and a half twist. But overall, you really have to hand it to her. She's got difficulty and she's got execution and She's got the guts to go for big things. Now, what sort of score has she got? That's the real question as we wait for a number for Anna Barbosu of Romania. We'll come back to that as we go to Ukraine on the floor. Valeria Osipova. From Ukraine, Valeria Otsipova. I was saying earlier just how we cannot imagine the difficulties of trying to assemble a working Ukrainian team for this competition. This is a gymnast who traversed Germany by herself, leaving the country. She's been training in France, as are many of the Ukrainian gymnasts. It is remarkable that we're even seeing work like this, that we're seeing any work at all. And it is good work, too. Double tuck there. She did a double pike to open. Really great position. Full 180 degree split on the switch leap. And like you say, Ollie, it is unimaginable what they have been through to get here. And the club that she has been involved with in France, they've been instrumental in actually providing safe passage and uh, a safe place for these gymnasts. This is more than just sport. This is a community. This is a group of people whose respect goes beyond the competition floor into a respect for humanity, a respect for people's right to be safe. Gymnastics teaches lots of different lessons. 12.366, the score for Valeria Osipova. 
Well then, we are moving towards the business end of this subdivision. One more rotation to come. Naomi Visser, top performer at this stage in the all-around, as though she were performing now with these other gymnasts. But hello, Anna Barbosu. Welcome to the party. Second place for her. Real standout performer in this rotation. This subdivision, I should say. And she's got floor exercise to come as well. That is a very good apparatus for her. Yes, that is most exciting. Anna Barbosu of Romania, well positioned. We look down the order. So many gymnasts in this all-around final. What a luxury to get to enjoy such diversity of styles, different experience levels that the gymnasts have. Some of them are old hands at this. Others, it's a very new experience for them. And team competitions foster a certain spirit, don't they, in the ranks, especially when they go well, as they have done for Norway recently at the Nordic Championships. We saw earlier on the lovely sight of Alba Patisco providing comfort to Laura Casabuena, her teammate. Well, Alba Patisco is a gymnast who competes for the same club in France that Valeria Osipova is training at. Yes, it's a club that has a history of bringing in foreign gymnasts to compete under their colors. They feel that in France that helps them. And like you said, it goes into culture. It goes into experience. It is more than sport. just have to glance around the different options that one has for a role model in this subdivision. So many fascinating athletes. You might be a, a young gymnast looking at somebody who's of a similar age to you and picking them as your favourite athlete as the star. You might be somebody who's thinking about making a comeback in the sport and you've just noticed Michelle Lawrenson out there competing and you've decided it's time to do it because she can do it. It's honestly never too late. Well, that's said at a rather brilliant time as we look over the shoulder of Agnes Suto of Iceland, the 29-year-old born in Hungary, competing at her fifth European Championships. There are some older philosophies of gymnastics that you have to train all the time, that you can never take a vacation because it's going to interfere with the hours and repetitions that you need to do in the gym. And we have athletes like Agnes Suto proving that that is not true at all. You can take a break of years and get back. Meanwhile, we're now with Madeleine Leitner of Norway on floor. Well, that was Madeleine Leitner from Norway, a young gymnast who is a great pleasure to see at senior international level. She's somebody, we talked about this earlier in the day, the impact of scholarship. She's just received a sports scholarship from the local municipal government in Lurenskog. And those are the sort of validating things that make you believe in yourself as an athlete. They are. And she is somebody who is going to get far more than one shot with floor exercises like this. 
Yes, we certainly found it easy to lose ourselves in the music in the moment. <laughs> now it is Stephanie Ziegenthaler competing on the uneven bars. Very nice floated Jaeger, even more floated Pax Salto down to low. Ah, but misses her feet. She wanted to put her feet on the bar. She does kip off and cover it successfully. And nice job for pulling that handstand over as well. Double layout. Well, that was a quick thinking and battling performance, wasn't it, from Stephanie Ziegenthaler of Switzerland. The gymnast who was born in the canton of Zurich in a village founded in the 1250s, a beautiful historic place, as many places in Switzerland are. She had a tremendous fight not to make a really major error in this routine, but she did it. Really clean swing, nice body position on the dismount, great landing too. The mechanics of this routine, despite its iffy moments where it looked like she might go over, were very good. Oldest member of the Swiss team, Steffi Ziegenthaler, 24. She won a medal, this young athlete, at the Junior National Championships on floor last year. And as I mentioned earlier, the team silver medal won by Norway at the Nordic Championships. Behind Sweden with Iceland, the bronze medalist. 11.3, the score for Madeleine Leitner. The only piece of activity for her in the team contribution that she's making at these championships. Maria Tronrud is next to perform for Norway. Norway's Maria Tronrud competing on floor. It's very evident that she's a gymnast who does more than just bring skill on the competition floor. She's a real young leader figure in the team, hence why she's been afforded the uh, title of captain of the uh, Norwegian squad. They respect her and listen to her, don't they? Yes. And there's a lovely stability to her work. Very nice double tuck to open. Look at her knees just glued together. Twelve point eight three three is the score for Stephanie Ziegenthaler. Switzerland hope that their campaign can get 
get back on track. It's been a very uneven competition for them, very uneven. Meanwhile, action continues over at the vaulting table. It's Freya Pedersen of Denmark. Showing a layout, Sukahara. She was a vault medalist at the national championships last year. Manages to hit and hold the layout position very nicely. She does put one foot outside of those three tram lines, however, that should be a one tenth penalty. Next for Switzerland, Annie Wu, 19-year-old from Baden. Rather wobbly, Stalder full to begin with. Slight leg separation on the pack salto. Line change, Pipe Jaeger. And it sounds like she clipped her foot on the low bar as she came down through the tap swing into that double pike dismount. Something of a look of relief there, perhaps, on the face of Annie Wu. It didn't feel quite right, did it, as she went into the dismount? It's destabilizing and it hurts to do that, frankly. This was the Pike Jaeger. And no problems on the dismount, despite the trouble going into it. Just a bit of stutter stepping as she lands. Had some bad wrist injury last year, Annie Wu, that she did well to recover quite quickly from. Meanwhile, the Norwegian team are in uh, good spirits. There's a really nice sense of team cohesion, isn't there, in the Norwegian group? They have a lot to be pleased with, plenty to be proud of as well. So we're close to as Annie Wu scores 12.2 on the uneven bars. We are close to the uh, next split warm up beginning. And we are now very close to the conclusion of Subdivision 3 with one subdivision to come. We're starting now to get a sense of who's really in the picture in terms of apparatus qualification. We just think about vault. There is the addition now of Georgieva into vault qualification in second place. 11.566 for Freya Pettersson's vault. Come back to that analysis in a moment as we continue with uh, the performances of the Norwegian team on the floor exercise. Juliana Tessebro.
Juliana Tessebro of Norway, the national champion on floor. She performs with a certain assurance, doesn't she? The best floor exercises really transcend the athletic part. They become performances, and it's safe to say she gave a performance. Good tumbling as well, however. Nice lift on her double pike and a really good landing. Punch front through to round off back handspring. Full twist. Finished with a flare. Very enjoyable work that from Juliana Tessebro of Norway. As we said earlier, the sacrifices that she's made, the determination she's shown, so commendable. Now representing Iceland on the balance beam, Helma Adelsteins Dottir. Very secure back handspring layout step out. Turgete with a half turn. just looks so steady. Only the dismount remaining. Round off one and a half twist. That's very encouraging work, isn't it, from this experienced gymnast, the 21-year-old from Reykjavik. And she is the reigning Nordic champion on the balance beam, a terrific performance last month. Clamped down on that loss of stability very quickly. <laughs> she did. It's always nice to see somebody coming from a regional competition like that and uh, to deliver a strong performance. She's done very well. What a wonderful reaction. 12.233 was the score. 11.966 for Juliana Tosabro on floor. Confirmation one more time of that score. Top score at the moment on the floor exercise. Produced by Naomi Visser. 13.633, Zofia Kovac. 13.433, just two tenths behind. Now we look at Andrea Preda of Romania on floor.
Andrea Preda from Romania. She competed in the floor competition at the Ossiek World Challenge Cup earlier this year. She also entered the vault competition too. As a team, Romania has certainly had its troubles over the past seven years, but one place where they are significantly improved is in the presentation quality of what they do on floor exercise. They no longer have the extraordinary difficulty that they once did, but they have really stylish choreography and dance. Now we're looking at uh, Lucia Riva of Slovenia. Well known, I'm sure, to many of you who've been watching the sport for a long time. As an uneven bars performer. Bronze medalist at the 2018 Mediterranean Games. She was fourth this time in Oran in Algeria, where she was also fourth in the all-around competition. She's known for her very strong work ethic. And she's one of those people who's been out there on the World Cup circuit for years now. She's also known for a very fluid swing, good lines, excellent toe point. And unfortunately for Lucia Ribar, a costly misjudgment there. It's the toe on Tkachev. Named after the American performer Elise Ray, who did it about 20 years ago. And, well, big risks bring big rewards, but there is a, the other side of the coin to that, too. She's been one of the busiest gymnasts in the world, I would say, this year. This is her ninth competition of 2022. If sheer determination guaranteed successful performances on an apparatus, then Lucia Fribar would never lose her grip on anything because she is such a worker. And you have to feel so sorry for her that it didn't work on this occasion. Finish the routine well, though. You were absolutely correct by them. What you said about her smoothness, her sense of fluidity and fluency on the apparatus. She's got a great swing. Twelve point seven three three is the score for Vida. In terms of floor qualification. That is the 10th best that we've seen so far. It's all getting a little congested in floor qualification. We'll probably get some separation in the next subdivision. 11.466 for Lucia Riba. I decided the lash. Straight into calling out encouragement for Sarah King, her teammate, who's the next to perform. And here is Sarah King, the 24-year-old, who has a fascinating story which we must uh, indulge in once she's performed. Straddle back and clear hip hecked to the high bar. Really lovely skill that we don't see often enough, frankly. Giants winding up into her own double tuck, controls it. Slovenia's Sarah King grew up in Maribor, moved there when she was eight, lived there for 10 years, made the all-around final of the Mediterranean Games in June, but she also has competed at events like the Maccabia Games. That's the lovely skill you were referring to. It's very nice, isn't it? It is. And as you say, not something that one sees at all frequently. It was actually part of the compulsory bar routine right before compulsories were eliminated back in 1996, the 93 to 96 Olympic quadrennium. 
That's really splendid knowledge, I have to say. <laughs> Even for you, that one is terrific. And you know everything about this sport. But uh, yes, back to Sarah King. She knows a lot about uh, psychology and art therapy. She's a graduate of that from Springfield College in Massachusetts. As I mentioned before, she's competed at the Maccabiya Games and she's doing a master's degree as well at Westchester University. So uh, Sarah King truly has found her own path in this sport. Now, on an impressive path so far is Anna Barbosu of Romania, second strongest performer of the all-around competitors we've seen so far coming into the final performance. We know that she is capable of very impressive things on floor so can she make herself potentially the leader going into the final subdivision then her work is done rather interesting her coach at the edge of the floor is signaling to her to come off the podium quite strange well we uh, may have had uh, a muddle in the order there because it is Silviana Sviringu who's next up to compete and indeed that is the published order that the Romanian team has chosen Anna Barbosa is next to go after this performance by Silviana Sviringu so it may just have been there was a little muddle in who was due to come out and perform next therefore it is Silviana Sviringu and we will just say to caveat that the Romanian team have had to readjust everything before the start of this competition. They did have to make changes with the withdrawal of Ioana Stangelescu and Sviringu with the gymnast who has come in unexpectedly. 10.8 the score for Sarah King. And so here is Silviana Sviringu. Right at the conclusion of the routine, not for the first time today. A gymnast finds the last moment of their display the most costly. Silviana Spiringu, a gymnast who's 2021 was just rotten. She really didn't have much go in her favour at all. It's great to see her here at these championships. And we shouldn't discount the stress that goes into being a last minute replacement for somebody. Just gets her heel caught at the end of what was a very good double twist. Yeah. 
Yes, most unfortunate for Silviana Svidingu. Coming into this on 36.532. Her best work has been produced on vault. The score is 10.066. That has her on a score of 46.598. Well, her time will come any minute now. Here we go. Anna Babosu of Romania. And uh, Barbosu of Romania in a place that was designed for stars to be born, in a place that was designed for people to emerge out of nowhere and to get people excited about this sport. Well, it's been a fine day, a very fine day. Yes, indeed. You can make a very long list of great Romanian gymnasts on floor and she is well on her way to becoming the latest name on that list. Excellent tumbling, excellent delivery of the choreography. Look how high she is on the punch front out of this two and a half twist. I think that's one of the most remarkable things, isn't it? Is the amplitude she gets. On every single pass. That the double pike. Just a very tidy, professional, enjoyable routine to watch. She's from a part of Romania that has something of a reputation for producing high quality gymnasts. 13.266 is the score for Anna Barbosu and look at where that places her in relation to Naomi Visser. A gap of 2 point, or rather 0.233 I should say. 53.265 the total score for Visser. 53.032 for Barbosu. And when you can stand pretty close to alongside an experienced gymnast who was fifth at the World Championships last year. You've done well. We are now focusing uh, on Joan de Freitas of Monaco on the balance beam. And we'll come back to the standings in a moment. Very nice back handspring layout. It's a series that we see again and again. But you really never get tired of it either. That was quality. Full twisting back handspring, the Kochikova. And 
unusual landing position for the switch leap. She opts to do it to two feet. And the side saw me in the setup to that, there was this idea that it was an element that made her nervous. Dismount, double twist. And we bid farewell to Joana de Freitas in this competition, the all-around final. It's been, one suspects, a very important learning experience for this young athlete from Monaco, the 16-year-old who's, I'm sure, found the step here to be an enormous one up to a first senior European Championships but there are plenty of encouraging signs in her work. Very encouraging, actually. Her technique is very good, and the gymnastics she displays quite promising. Time to take stock of the numbers. Time to avail ourselves of a moment of pause before the competition resumes in a very short space of time because we have the final subdivision to come that will determine the all-around title here at the Munich 2022 European Championships of Artistic Gymnastics. We've got some big hitters to come, and we've seen some big hitters perform already. The team standings are very interesting. Germany, then Netherlands, then Hungary, then Spain, then Romania. The top five.